Uh, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Pastor Ernie Jung here at Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. Uh, God's blessings to you this day as we, uh, as we speak of uh, what does this mean? Loneliness? Uh, what, a, what an interesting topic this is in the day, uh, in the day and age that we live in. And uh, I think something that uh, hits home to all of us uh, in, in so many different ways. So um, thank you for joining me, uh, whenever that may be. Uh, uh, blessings to you this day as we, as we begin uh, with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Dearly Father, O Lord, uh, you give us your grace that through all things you are with us. Uh, bless us, O Lord, that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we, we will fear no evil because... O oh Lord, you are, you promise to be with us. Bless us, O oh Lord, this day in the comfort of salvation, in the comfort of your holy name. Give us rest and solitude in the redemption that you so freely give to us by your grace. And lead us, O oh Lord, always in this faith. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, today... Uh, we're going to speak of the elephant in the room, and that is loneliness. I know in this day and age, uh, as we are uh, so technologically connected like never before, right? we, we have everything. Um, Facebook, as we're doing right now on Facebook Live, we have that. Uh, we have Instagram, which um, I'm not really familiar with, uh, but we a lot of people do that. Uh, we have you know, texting, we have video chat, we have uh, Google chat, we have a uh, FaceTime. Um, we have all these things in this world. I mean, we're, we're, we're inundated with so many screens, right? Screens that connect us ideally uh, so quickly and instantly uh, to, um, to any, anyone we would like at any given time. Yet the question is, I think even with those things, uh, we are still faced with, uh, with this epidemic. It is an epidemic uh, of loneliness, uh, isolation, separation, especially during the pandemic of COVID. You know, it, I think this is the time, this is the manifestation of what COVID has brought to a lot of people, is that reality of isolation, separation, and loneliness. And now the question is, uh, yeah, what is loneliness? And I guess we'll start with, the statistics, real quick. Now, I'll give you some statistics here, and these are uh, uh, very alarming. I think, um, according to a uh, 2018 study by Cigna, which is an insurance company, you know, in health insurance, so they, they definitely know, uh, they definitely deal with a lot of people um, in, their, in the realm of their health. And uh, they report that nearly half of Americans uh, feel alone. This is 2018, around 46%. Now, 2018, 2020 now, I guarantee, not guarantee, but I, most likely that percentage probably has shot up, especially during the pandemic, right? Uh, another statistic for you, around 25% of people uh, rarely feel that um, anyone really understands them, right? Another uh, marker of loneliness. Um, around 43% feel that uh, they are isolated from other people. Isolation, right? 20% um, feel that they are never close to anyone that they can comfort comfortably and personally and trustfully talk to. 20%. Um, only another picture percentage of around half of Americans say that they have meaningful conversations on a daily basis with friends or family. So the other 50 do not. That is, that is, this is the statistic, right? Um, Generation Z, um, ages 18 to 22, is considered the lonely and loneliest generation um, of all the generations that are living right now. Generation Z, so our, our kids, right? 
uh, ages 18 to 22, our college kids, our young adults, they are considered by survey, by statistic, the loneliest generation um, in the world today, right? Now again, uh, another uh, alarming statistic is this. I can't say statistic or loneliness today, sorry. Uh, that social media use, that heavy users of social media have a loneliness score of 43, right? And those that never use social media have a, a less loneliness score of 41. So, so the point is, is that social media, social media, social media infers that we are more social, but yet it has, it has uh, bred um, a more lonely generation. Right? We're hiding behind our screens, we're hiding behind our fingers, we're, we're hiding behind all these things, and, and little do we know that we are isolated as ever. Um, we are. I mean, you, you go to the park, you go to the shopping center, uh, you, you, you go to the dinner uh, at a restaurant, and you see everyone on their phones. I mean, they're all together, right? But they're all on their phones. Um, and again, it's a picture of how we have become so isolated, even when we are close to people, right? Uh, this is what, uh, whether this is an intended or unintended, an unintended consequence, uh, this is what technology has brought to the table. It has bred more loneliness. Now, this is even a more alarming statistic, is that people who suffer from loneliness, this epidemic of loneliness, uh, the, the health organization uh, claims that suffering loneliness is like smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I'm not a smoker, right? I'm not a smoker, but uh, I can't imagine uh, smoking 15 cigarettes a day uh, for myself. And if I did, um, I, I know that that could probably not be good. That's probably not good for the body, right? All that smoke. And, um, you know, with loneliness, loneliness, uh, it is... It is the same thing, right? So, so again, um, and another alarming statistic is lonely people are 70% more likely to die prematurely. So, again, I know those statistics are very alarming and very discouraging and very sad, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's something that we need to broach because I think all of us face that internally, whether we uh, admit it or not. I think we're living in a time of technological age where we are isolated as ever. And the pandemic has just brought that down even more, right? We, we're all isolated. After all, I'm, I'm doing this Facebook Live on video with you. Usually this is done in person, right? So the pandemic, all the things that we're facing, isolation has been a great cause of concern uh, for just for the world, for the world, for, for their physical well-being. Um, and for their, uh, for their health, right? Loneliness is a real thing. Uh, something that we cannot just brush off and say, oh, I'll be fine. I just have to fill it up somehow and, and, and find my happiness somewhere else. And I just have to figure it out, right? Because I think the more and more we try this, uh, this solution of loneliness, that is more media, more screens, right? Texting and YouTube, binge watching Netflix, uh, Facebook, uh, I try to stay off Facebook. You know, I'm always telling myself, you got to quit Facebook. You got to quit all these things. Um, because again, it, it, they all breed isolation, right? Um, and, and some people uh, uh, delve into drugs or, or alcohol or sex um, or money, right? All these things, the things of the world to cope with the emptiness inside, with the loneliness inside. Um, because I think at the end of the day, of our human endeavors to do what? Is to find that uh, happiness, to find that solitude, to find peace and fullness in the midst of the loneliness in each and every one of our lives. And when we go down this human endeavor of trying to search for these things, uh, we know that we are all sorely disappoint disappointed. Those statistics, um, and I, I, I think for the, for the youth, uh, such an important... Uh, picture here of of the generation Z is that they are considered the most lonely generation of all generations, and that is for our kids, right? Uh, I know my kids are a little younger than that, but 
it is it is a cause of great concern, right? Because loneliness is real. We, we can't just fluff it off saying it's, it's no big deal, but actually it is an epidemic uh, that is facing all of our generations uh, this day, um, including our youth. And, and, and we as parents, we as adults, we as young adults, wh whoever you may be, and, and kids, we, we need to really broach this topic uh, for what it really is. So now that's what we're going to do today. So what is uh, the reality of loneliness? I know uh, when I always think of these themes, I'm always going to the Bible, right? Bible is so important. Um, and we're going to go today uh, with the story of Joseph. Joseph in the Bible. Now, Joseph uh, was uh, the, the picture of loneliness. I mean, with the circumstances that he faced, he had these dreams. He was telling his brothers, yes, uh, uh, by these dreams, he was showing them that they once, his older brothers, would once, one day worship him, the younger brother, um, and, uh, you know, you know, Joseph was favored by his father. He got all these things and the brothers did not like him. So what did they do? They, they threw him in the, in the pit, sold him into slavery. Right? The pit of misery. Right? Uh, sold him into slavery. And there, as he was being brought to Egypt, uh, there he was uh, brought to Potiphar, an official of Pharaoh, King Pharaoh. Uh, the official, kind of the, the underhand man of uh, Pharaoh, there was Potiphar, who, who saw favor with Joseph, because what did he see? He saw that um, uh, in verse uh, Genesis 39, verse 2 and 3, that uh, the Lord was with him. Now, in Potiphar's house, he, he became, Joseph became, now again, all this stuff, right? From the pit of misery to slavery to Potiphar. I mean, this is all that Joseph never really asked for. But this is the circumstance that he faced. And these are all pictures of loneliness. Pit of misery, slavery, under Potiphar's house. And there at Potiphar's house, it didn't end there, right? A Potiphar's wife one day wanted to sleep with Joseph. And Joseph said, no, I can't. That's sinning in front of God. He ran away and, and Potiphar's wife was upset. So she falsely accused Joseph of adultery. And there Joseph was thrown into prison. Now, prison is uh, the biggest uh, kind of uh, picture of isolation, of, of loneliness. Um, but the thing is, even though the circumstances bred the reality of um, loneliness, right? What does it say in the Bible? It says in Genesis 39, verse 2 and 3, the Lord was with Joseph, right? The Lord was with Joseph, right here. Genesis 39. He was with Joseph. Right. Um, and yet, um, as uh, we see in, again in Genesis 39, 21, if you have your Bibles out, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Right. It, continuing on in verse 23, it reads, it reads, The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge. Because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. Right? Through all the circumstances of loneliness, Joseph could have just kind of, what, what could he have done? He could have just groveled, right? He could have just meditated upon the loneliness that was in his midst. Absolutely, for sure. This was a picture of loneliness. I mean, being betrayed by your brothers, uh, that is a sense, a great sense of loneliness, right? Betrayal. I mean, being falsely accused and put in a physical prison, isolation, that is loneliness in itself. I mean, he could have just done what? He could have just lived in this loneliness and, 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 and really suffered through it. But as we see in the text of Genesis 39, and also, um, yeah, Genesis 39, we see that uh, the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. 
in the midst of all this. Right? Remember what we said earlier about the dream, that he would one day rule over his brothers. Right? And uh, through it all, Joseph kept on in the faith because he knew that the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him in the pit, in slavery, um, at Potiphar's house, in prison. Right? The Lord was with him. I think the world is searching for the answer to the epidemic of loneliness. Um, But the question I have, I think, in the midst of the epidemic of loneliness is, where is God? Where is God? And even more, how do you know that God is with you? Where is God? And how do you know that God is with you? Right. Now, I guess the first question would be, I guess the th- that's the third question, I'm sorry. Third question would be, uh, well, not third question, but first we must understand the, the spiritual reality of, of loneliness. So what is the, the spiritual reality? You know, on the, on the fleshly, superficial, surface side, it is, I'm lonely, I need to figure out this fullness, and I have to achieve that fullness, I have to go on that quest for fullness. Uh, maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain things of the world, uh, certain objects, uh, certain idols, whatever it may be. It could be money, too, right? If I have more money, my life, uh, I wouldn't be lonely, or... Or, or, or if I had that certain relationship, that relationship will give me my fullness. Um, relationships can also be uh, idols as well, right? Um, as if they are the object of our answer to loneliness. Um, and there's so many different things uh, that we try to do to cope with the reality of loneliness. Now, the spiritual reality is what? And, and you know what I'm going to say here probably, but it's, it's rooted in the fall. Remember, before Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God created man and they were together, right? No isolation, no separation, no loneliness. I mean, this was the picture of perfection, right? Created in the image of God, God and man together. What happened when they sinned? This God and man brought a chasm, a separation, all because of sin, right? And what did man do in that sin? Adam and Eve realized what they had done, and their next action was what? To hide. Isolation. Right? To hide. To hide from God because they knew what they had done. Of course, God is, you know, he is all powerful, omnipotent. He's everywhere, omnipresent. He's omniscient. He knows all things. And God came to them. He knew where they were. They were hiding in isolation because that is the the result of sin, isn't it? Separation from God, isolation, and even loneliness. They hid. And what did the Lord say? He said, you know, I will, I know you've done all these things, right? But I will give you the Savior. Genesis 3.15. The offspring of a woman will be the Savior of the world. Now, why does God say in Genesis 3.15, the first, we call that the first gospel. So the Old Testament has the gospel. Remember that. The Old Testament has the gospel. We see in Genesis 3.15, the first promise of the Savior. Now, what will the Savior do? What will the Savior do? The Savior, well, will give us that reconciliation, that oneness with God once again. 
no longer separated, but reconciled to God, all by the Savior. What is the reconciliatory work? That's a big word, reconciliatory. That's seven syllables. Wow, I don't say a lot of seven syllable words. But, but what is that reconcilia <laughs> reconciliatory work, that reconciliation? What is that work that reconciles you to God? It is his work upon the cross. That the Lord came to us, Jesus, sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, and three days later, rise from the dead. Um, and because of it, because of the Lord's work, uh, we know, we know that uh, the Lord has forgiven us of our sins, right? We, we know that he has gifted us, by his grace, the gift of life eternal and salvation. But we also know that by his word, he is with us. Do we still face loneliness? Of course we do. We're fleshly people, right? We're sinful people. We're fallen short people. But when we go to the scriptures, remember the scriptures, the word of God, the Bible shows us where our God is. He says in the Bible, the Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise from God. God is not a liar. He says, I am with you always, Jesus says in Matthew 28, I am with you always until the end of the age. Dwell on that for a moment. I think for me, I need to dwell on that all the time because I truly know uh, that reality of loneliness right? It's real. It's not just something that we throw around saying, oh yeah, we're lonely or we're not lonely or, you know, I love the police song, you know, the police, uh, so lonely. I love that song. I don't know if you ever listened to the police. Um, anyways, uh, but yeah, we're, we're living in a world that is searching and that is um, searching in darkness for, for the fulfillment of loneliness. And for us, you know, we, we go back to God's word and say, what does God say about loneliness? He says, you are not alone. I am with you always until the end of the age, right? That God is always with us. Psalm 23, good shepherd text, right? We know this famous psalm. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. That even in the shadow of death, this valley of sorrow, God is with us. And that is how we tread forth because we know that he is with us. And it says later in Psalm 23 that our cup will overflow as he anoints us with his oil, that he sets us apart as his children. The overflowing life. Remember, we look at the cup, right? And we see this empty cup. And what do people do with that cup of loneliness? They try to throw in all these things, right? All these things, multimedia, money, uh, 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 things of the world, all these things to try to fill that empty cup of loneliness. But it only gets them even more lonely. That's why we're dealing with the epidemic of loneliness. But rather, when we talk about the word of God and the promise of the gospel here, we very well know that this cup is full, filled in the blood of Christ. His crucifixion, His resurrection for the forgiveness of your sins, reconciling you, being the remedy for your separation, your isolation, and that is apart from God, is by the blood of Christ that He brings you to that oneness to God. His death and resurrection, right? All right. Uh, so this is, I, I think, very important because, um, you know, um, I think loneliness is a real battle, a real suffering that everyone faces. And, and the question is, where do we go for the answer? Right? The, the next question should be, where do we go for that answer? Right? And that is to the very word of God. This is the answer uh, to the battle we face with the epidemic of loneliness. It is the promise that God gives to each and every one of you. Right? So, he reconciles us to God. That isolation, that separation, 
It's by the work of Christ, His love for you, His sacrifice upon that cross at Calvary, where there He died so that you may live. You may have life in the oneness with God, salvation for your soul, the forgiveness of your sins. I mean, what a great fullness that is, right? The remedy, the cup that now overflows. Look at that picture of Psalm 23, as we live under the Good Shepherd, you know, still waters, green pastures, all these things. What a great gift that is. Yes, Lord, you are with me. How do I know? Because your word says so. Right? Uh, You know, we we look at this uh, picture and also from the fruits of the cross, and I don't, we haven't talked about this too much lately, but from the fruits of the cross, How do we know that God is with us? From the fruits of the cross. Because of the cross, we know that God is with us in our baptism. Have you been baptized? If not, come talk to me. Please, come talk to me. Baptism, right? Baptism. What does baptism give? Right? Romans 6 says, whoever is baptized into Christ, well, is basically connected to the death and resurrection of our Lord. Connected. We're not detached. We're not isolated, but we're connected. Right? That is the remedy for isolation. Uh, uh, Galatians 3 uh, says, whoever has been baptized into Christ has put on Christ. So how do I know that God is with me? In my baptism. Because scripture says so, not a feeling, right? Not, not an inkling, not a gut, not a gut hunch of any kind, but because scripture says so, I know that God is with me all by the baptism, all by baptism, which he has called me by his grace into the water and the word, enveloping me and entrenching me in, in the water and the river of life, connecting me to God, right? That I am no longer, uh, um, I'm no longer without the answer, but rather I flee to my baptism. Now, earlier I had that cup, right? Again, how do I know that God is with me? The other, as we call it, the sacraments, the Lord's Supper, communion. This is where God meets us, right? That's why communion is so great. Because here, this is a a clear word in Scripture that God says, take and eat, take and drink. This is my body. This is my blood, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, 1 Corinthians. Check it out. That he meets us and promises to meet us by his very true body and blood as we eat and receive for the forgiveness of our sins. How do I know that God is with me? That's right. And even uh, lastly, you know, as, as we talk about the koinonia, the fellowship of believers, you know, in this time of isolation, I think what we long for is to get together, right? Hebrews 10, right? That, that, that whole picture of gathering together uh, for service, right? Encouraging one another as the day draws near. That, you know, I think, and I've been kind of uh, 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 ruminating over this lately, but I think... Uh, and I've talked to some people about it, and, and I think the one of the the online the online um, uh, service has been a great benefit in COVID. Uh, but I think even in certain elements, um, it has become also um, uh, an un- unintended consequence. It also has become uh, it almost has become a form of isolation as well. I think it. It almost becomes like the app-driven generation that we're living in this day, right? That everything is becoming more app-like. You know, we go to Netflix, we go to Hulu, we go to all these apps, and and church somehow becomes that option again, like an app. We just click on it, we we sit in the confines of our home, and and we watch. Um, I think uh, uh, for our human humanness, uh, it's a very easy thing to forget that that joy of of getting together and again, with the pandemic and with all these interesting times, I know uh, it's such such a case-by-case issue, but at the end of the day, um, that joy of the church family 
is another way to which, as we gather together, uh, is another way to be a part of the community, the body of Christ. You know, here at Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, I, I love my church family and I miss them dearly. I miss you all, right? Um, uh, seeing you on Sunday, what a great thing, right? To just get together, human beings getting together, the body, the faithful, the saints, right here at Moore Park uh, at Faith Lutheran Church. And, and what a great joy that is to see one another. And I encourage you, uh, whoever is listening, whatever uh, church you go to, um, that is something I think that is a very important part of the Christian life, is that gathering together, right? Because that isolation is, is no joke, right? That isolation is, is not just like we're going to endure this. It, it, that Lone Ranger thing is very difficult, very, very difficult for all of us, right? So, you know, again, all these ways, you guys, as we talk about that oneness, um, that battle against the epidemic of loneliness, it's always about asking the right questions, right? How do I know where God is? Where is God? And what is my true loneliness? Right? Where, what is my true loneliness? Is it just on the surface? That if I just kind of pile up all these things into this cup, it'll be full and I won't be lonely anymore? Or is it more of a spiritual, on that spiritual realm, the spiritual problem of sin, right? And what does God say in his word pertaining to loneliness? We, we went back to Joseph. I encourage you to read the story of Joseph and the, the victory that he gives in the promise that he is always with us. Uh, so that epi epidemic of loneliness is, is very real in our flesh in this world today. Uh, but yet at the same time, uh, the word of God, the gospel. That's right. That's right. What a great gift. The sacraments, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. What a great gift. For there we find that the Lord is with us. He is. He is. He is. He is. Why? Because the Word says so. All right? All right. We're past time here. Thank you for joining me this day. Why don't we close uh, with a word of prayer? Lord, dear Heavenly Father, we know that uh, by your grace we are saved. Thank you, O Lord, for coming to us in the midst of our separation. Thank you for reconciling us to you, O Lord, by your work upon the cross. Lord, bless us in your peace, knowing full well that by your word you have promised to us the oneness with God. Lead us and guide us, and Lord, grant us your wisdom um, to endure the days ahead in the solitude and peace that you give. Thank you, O Lord, for the cup that overflows as we live in your house forever. Lord, for all these things we are thankful. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, uh, thank you for joining me this day, and hopefully this goes well with you. If you have any questions, um, please call me, email me, text me. Um, if you have any thoughts or you want to discuss this further, please do. If you're struggling with loneliness, please come talk to me. I'm here for you. Anytime, any place, just let me know. And um, we're going to... We're going to get through this together, right? We're going to get through this together. You're not alone in this. We're a, we're a body of Christ. We're a family of Christ. And we, we, we will get back to what is true, what is real, and what is uh, the deliverance uh, through our gracious Lord and His promises. All right. Until next time, Pastor Ernie Jung here, Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. God's blessings to you this day. And until next time, the Lord be, the Lord be with you. All right. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.